Good afternoon. I am Adam Gaffney, and I'm honored to be a part of the LBB Techno Demo Day. And so I'm going to talk about some various uh, technologies today. And I do encourage anybody who's out there participating live that if you have questions to uh, go ahead and type those up for us. And uh, we love to answer questions. I do like interaction. So a little bit about me. Um, I work for the Division of Blind Services, which is a state agency housed under the Department of Education. And I've been at Blind Services now for almost 24 years. It'll be 24 years next month. So um, I work in our IT section there. So I provide support to both visually impaired and sighted users in several different capacities uh, in using our case management system, in using uh, the, I support the Business Enterprise Program, which some of you might know about from going around the state and seeing some of the uh, rest stops along the interstates and federal buildings and whatnot that have our vendors, so I support them. And um, I do some training as well as adaptive technology and some other uh, consulting for the agency about 508 compliance and adaptive technology, which I'm going to talk about some of that today. So. Uh, it's very interesting. I kind of have my finger in a lot of different areas of technology, and I love it. I think technology has really leveled the playing field and given people who are blind and visually impaired a, a lot of options now that we didn't have 15 or 20 years ago. We can do a lot more, and it costs a little bit less to get things like Amazon Echo devices at home or your Google Home devices or other things that you can hook up to Wi-Fi and you can get access to a whole lot more stuff for a fairly good price. So we're going to talk about um, some of that stuff today, but I um, wanted to talk a little bit about more about what Division of Blind Services does. So we basically support and serve the blind and visually impaired community of Florida. We have several different programs. Our VR program is about helping people find employment and maintain employment, whether that's training or uh, eye surgeries, other things. So I encourage people to learn more about that. And we have a, a older blind program, our independent living program for the, uh, those who are not interested in going to work, but just want to learn how to be more independent around the kitchen at their homes. And um, we have a blind babies program for babies and their parents, of course, to learn more about what to expect and how to move into, um, you know, going into school and things to accommodate their lives to become uh, on the path of, of um, dealing with special things that you need to consider for people who are blind and visually impaired. And we have a children's program as well for those who are a little bit older than the babies, but not quite old enough to get into our VR program. So our website at DBS is dbs.myflorida.com. And that's DBS, like Division of Blind Services, dot myflorida, and that's Florida all spelled out, dot com. And you can apply for services. You can read about our programs, and there's some other great resources out there as well on our page. So, um, and I got to brag about our web page a little bit because it is very, it's uh, it looks nice and it's professional, but it's very accessible for those of you who use screen reading technology. Uh, it will be very easy to use and find things on there. All the links are nicely labeled. It's got headings so that you can move around to different sections and uh, it works very well. So we test that out every time we make a change. It's well tested. And so we do those things to make it easy so everyone can uh, use it and get information from that and find it useful. Also on there, if you know somebody who would like to look at applying for services for the Division of Blind Services, we have a form on there that someone can fill out and that form will apply services. If you want to apply to the division, you can fill out an electronic form. Of course, there's office locations where you can call. And if somebody is not real computer savvy, 
they can contact one of our offices by phone and someone will actually work with folks over the phone to complete that application to apply for services at the division. So we offer lots of different ways to uh, get access to our services. Uh, and of course the LBB here is one of our partners. We, we work with several of those around the state who actually really provide the, the training that people get um, that's come up with after they apply for services and get uh, um, eligible and they're eligible for our services they can they can get services from the lighthouses around the state of Florida. So one other thing I wanted to talk about that is offered to those who are actually getting served by the division is our statewide license program with a company called Vispero. Now some of you may know Vispero, but a lot of you probably don't know Vispero. That's a parent company that owns Freedom Scientific. Now that company may ring a few more bells, but some people still may not know. Freedom Scientific is a company that makes a lot of different hardware and software solutions for people who are blind and low vision. Probably the most popular software program that they maintain and have made is called JAWS. It's the screen reader for Windows and that's been around. It's still being updated all the time. I use it every day at work. My life has uh, definitely been enhanced by having the JAWS screen reader that I use every day and I like to see all the enhancements and stuff that uh, is out there with JAWS. In fact, the public beta is out of JAWS 2021. There's some really exciting new features in there. So you go to freedomscientific.com and you can see some of the hardware and software programs that are offered by Freedom. Uh, Zoom Text is a screen magnifier for people who are, uh, need just some screen enlargement or color changes, large mouse pointers and other things like that. That's a pretty powerful program. And then Fusion is putting the two of those together for somebody who wants speech with JAWS and magnification. Or you might have special needs and have your vision such that you can see a little bit better in the morning and then your eyes get tired in the afternoon and you want to start out with magnification and then move on to speech in the afternoon. So you have that, that flexibility when you use a product called Fusion which combines those both together. So I say all that because we have partnered with uh, Vispero for anyone who is right now an active client or participant, we call them, with the division, uh, they can get those software programs. It, it's I, I can't say it's really for free because we paid ahead of time for it, but uh, we have an arrangement with Vispero. So if you are an active member or a client of the division, you can do that. And I, and this is encouraging folks, if they're not, to become a client of the division by filling out our application and getting on for with services with us, but uh, it's a one-year license and it is renewable. If you're still an open client after that year, you get another year. And so, uh, you know, that software can be a little bit pricey for some. So, um, the Sparrow Freedom Scientific have kind of changed their licensing models a lot so that they are a little bit more affordable. You can get a home license, say for JAWS, for $90 per year for a license that renews every year, and you can renew that if you wish. But like I say, with this agreement you, we have with the Sparrow and Division of Blind Services, if you have an open case, speak to your counselor or someone at the lighthouse or wherever you're being served or trained, and they can send in a request to us so that we can get the most updated version of the JAWS or Zoom Text or Fusion software for you to use uh, on your home computer or at work. And so that's a home annual license that, that we provide. And then at, after that one year, you have the option to uh, keep your case open and get another year or just assume the payment yourself. If you've got a great paying job by then and you're ready to take it on yourself and pay the $90 a year, or whatever the cost is for that software to go ahead and and, uh, and do that yourself. So that's a little bit about me, the company that I work, or the division that I work, and some of the things we have to offer. So 
if there aren't any questions so far, we'll move to the next segment of my time today, and that's to get into a few weeds about some specific devices and how to learn more about those devices. So there are a lot of choices out there now about different technologies and products to use, and uh, it's a game changer that we have so many choices. So uh, smartphones, there people do use the Android operating system, and people use that quite successfully. There's a lot of people who really like it. A lot of people really like iOS and the iPhone technology with iPads and Macintosh computers and all that stuff, too. So there's a lot of great accessibility. Uh, just so many choices now. A lot of the bigger companies now are embracing technology like Comcast. They have talking cable boxes. They have a special number for people to call uh, for assistance with accessibility issues. Microsoft has that numbers like that. And just uh, a lot of the companies that are large companies that weren't into adaptive technology have really stepped up and offered solutions and support to these things. So I'm going to talk a bit today about iPhone. And um, I think it's been a big game changer. I think it's probably one of the biggest things to come around. For me, I use it for a lot of things. Um, I used it this morning to get from home to work. I use a app called Token Transit to pay for my um, my bus pass with a token. I use it at Publix to pay use Apple Pay to use contactless payment. I use it for meetings. I use it for fun things like listening to sports broadcasts, listening to music, searching the web, communicating and talking with friends, using Twitter, Facebook, social media. I use Uber and Lyft and a lot of the things that people use. There's just a, and, and new things coming out all the time. So Let's, go, let's step back a little bit and say, what if you want to buy one of these things? You know, how, where do I get it? How much does it cost? You know, there's a lot of different models out there. I happen to have an older iPhone 10 that is almost three years old now. And I'm hoping to uh, have this thing last me another couple months and get the new iPhone 12 that's coming out. Hopefully, it will be coming out around uh, October, November of, of 2020 here. Uh, the latest phone that was just released by Apple, the latest iPhone that was released about a month, two months ago or so, is called the iPhone SE. That's SE like Sam Echo, SE, iPhone SE. And it is uh, one of the more affordable phones. You can get the starting price for this phone is $399, which is pretty good because it basically is a... Uh, iPhone 8 case with the iPhone 11 processor in it. So it's pretty fast. Uh, the screen isn't quite as good as some of the newer models, and the camera isn't. But a lot of blind people don't really need the greatest screen or the greatest camera in the world. So they can get by um, with without those, those things. And even with the camera that is on the SE for $399, you can still do things like have some of the wonderful apps like the Microsoft Seeing AI app that will snap a picture of a page and read it back to you or identify currency. The camera is good enough still to do those things. So that's a good option for people on a budget uh, who want a phone um, to go out and get one. So once you've got it, what are some ways to start learning how to use this, this wonderful piece of technology? So I'm going to get in here in a minute and show some things on my phone specifically, but I want to bring up a wonderful website resource for anything Apple related that is great for someone wanting to learn or to just follow up. This, this is uh, the Apple This website. It's www.applevis.com. That's A-P-P-L-E-V-I-S.com. And on this website, there are podcasts blogs and discussion groups, uh, how-to guides uh, about anything accessible with Apple computers, with Macs, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches, Apple TV, and different apps, recommendations for apps 
in all kinds of different categories, and uh, it's just a wonderful resource. Um, the iOS 14 is the operating system that was just released last week, and there are a lot of podcasts and everything and a lot of things out there that will explain some of the new features for those who use the voiceover screen reader that comes free on every Apple product and the Zoom program that is their magnification program, not to be confused with Zoom, the um, communications system there that we use for meetings. So I definitely encourage people to check out applebis.com. It's a great website. It's uh, full of resources. You'll use it as a beginner to get guides and learn how to get started with this stuff. And you'll also use it when you get more experienced and you want app recommendations or want a place to be able to uh, add and, and help people out and get help from other people who uh, have a lot of experience with different types of apps. And uh, it's just a wonderful resource, a great community. So uh, let me turn on my phone here and wake it up a little bit and show you a couple things. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock my phone. And I have one of the phones that, has the, that has the camera that uses face recognition. So the SE that I mentioned earlier has the old home button that you can use to uh, press to go home. This phone does not. It just has the facial recognition. The iPhone 10 and above have that, but the SE that just came out doesn't. And some visually impaired people um, like the camera for face recognition. Some do not. So um, the camera isn't too bad. You get used to the camera. I always tell people a lot of people who are visually impaired hold the phone a little too close to their face when they want it to recognize them to open the phone up to unlock it. So I always say it's good to hold it about an arm's length apart from your face to be able to get a good uh, glance at your face to recognize for authenticating to make sure you are you. Because these phones have a lot of um, personal information on here. I've got my, uh, you know, credit card on here. I've got Uber on here. I've got Amazon so people can go in. You know, I don't want anybody just to get this phone. So there's a lot of data and apps I really want to keep safe. So um, it's good to, you know, keep that stuff in mind when you're setting up security on the phone and that type of thing. So uh, I'm using the voiceover screen reader, which I said does come free. And the great thing is, is when you get a phone and you uh, take it home and you want to start voiceover for the first time and you get the brand new phone or you get a friend who has an iPhone and you want to try it out, you can press, there's what's called the side button or the lock button. And it's a long button on the side of the phone. And when you get the phone brand new, you can press this button three times quickly. Just press, 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 and voiceover will come up and start talking to you. And you can use it just out of the box, nothing to install or anything like that. So it's a great option that you can just do it right out of the box and set this thing up brand new. Of course, a lot of people know about Siri. She is the voice assistant. And I've been using iPhones for a long time. I started with the iPhone 4 back oh gosh, six years ago or more, or maybe longer than that. I, no, I've actually been using an iPhone for about 10 years. So uh, this was before Siri was even around. So I'm kind of old school with the phone and learn how to use all the flick gestures and that type of thing on the phone to type on it and get around the thing before Siri came around. But it's really not that hard to learn. It takes some practice and takes some time. Um, but I used the phone before Siri was even around. And I always tell people, if you really work with the phone and learn it, there's this breakthrough. You can struggle with the phone for about two or three weeks, but then once you practice enough and get the right guidance, you can uh, make that breakthrough. And then there's this aha moment that says, this is pretty simple. I can do this. And a lot of people have this. So it's good to... Uh, figure out how to get over that hump and realize how powerful and easy the phone is to use. So I'm, I'm in the phone and I want to uh, show a practice mode where I can go in to practice the different gestures on the phone to learn. And this is good even for people who want uh, to just practice a more complicated gesture. And there's a couple ways to get into this. So I'm going to show you 
two ways here. I can use a four finger double tap. That's a complicated way, kind of. A lot of people, if they're not used to a gesture, they have a little trouble doing that gesture. So I can do that. Um, Starting hell. To stop hell, perform a four finger double tap or two finger scrub, or press escape on the keyboard. All right, so that said a lot there. So I can start practicing gestures. And did mention something called keyboard. You can actually get a Bluetooth keyboard for this thing to type and even enter commands in. So somebody who's not great with the gestures has the alternative of using a keyboard. Now I can type pretty well on the touch screen, but I'm not great at it. I do a lot of dictation and I do use a keyboard for some of the typing as well. So I like that option to have that flexibility. So now I'm going to do a couple gestures and just let you hear what they are. So I'm going to touch the screen. Touch. Speak item. All right, so touch will speak the item that's under your finger. So sighted people can just see what they want, touch it once to open it up. But blind people who want to learn how to use the phone, touch it, and it says the name of the item or icon, and then you have to double tap it to select it or to tap it. So that's one thing. When we touch, that's looking around the screen. Double tapping is actually opening something up to use it. So I'm going to flick to the right. One finger swipe left. Move to previous item. Sorry, I got my left and right backwards because I'm, I'm backwards myself from the perspective. So I went left, but uh, left and right will move your focus left and right. And it will speak that item, and then you can double tap it. So it's a good way to uh, move around and see what's on the screen. And that, if you learn those three things, flick right, flick left, and double tap, with one finger, you can get to almost anything on the phone. It might take you a while to go through things. There are shortcuts that will help you shortcut a lot of those things, but if you learn those and you have patience, you'll be able to go through all this stuff and really get through using the phone. So that's as simple as it really gets right there. I'll do a double tap and you can hear what it says there and show you how that works. So one finger double tap, activate. So, um, that's how you tap tap is how quickly you have to do it. So, um, you know, there's there's more complicated gestures too. There's uh, the rotor, which a lot of people uh, want to learn how to do. That's where you can select and move by different items. If you want to spell a word, you can go and move by word or by letter. And the rotor has different options. So the way you can imagine it is like a physical dial on the screen, and you're using two fingers to rotate that actual um, virtual dial on the screen. So I'm going to take two fingers and rotate my fingers just a little bit. Two finger rotate counterclockwise. Previous rotor. Okay, so it said counterclockwise previous rotor. So I'm going to do it again. Two finger rotate counterclockwise. Previous rotor. So for those who might want to use this voiceover practice, I always encourage people, try it out several times and drill yourself and get really good at it so that you do it over and over again and it gets to be natural. Um, and in fact, I'm going to go ahead and get out of help right now. But the one way I showed you first how to get in is it's not the easiest way if you're just getting started on this. So I'm going to do a different way. So I'm going to get out of help, which is what they call a two-finger scrub. That's just taking two fingers and moving up and down. Two finger scrub. Escape. Stopping help. So now I've stopped help, and now I am actually using the phone live. So it's going to, whatever I do, the gestures I do are going to move and, and do those things. So let me do those things just to show you what we've done here. I'm going to flick to the left here. Token transit. And that's my token Double transit to that I use to. Get to work every day. So I'm going to just find an app here and open it up. Safari. MLB. Safari. MLB. MLB. I like baseball. Let's Double go into that. Open. Use 3D touch to show home screen actions. Actions available. MLB. MLB. TV. Button. Change team. Ask MLB. MLB audio. Button. I'm just flicking to the right. <laughs> Sunday. September 20th. Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Orioles versus Red Sox, 7.30 p.m. ET. Probable pitchers, Aiken, 1-1 one one record with 3.38, E, R, A, Pivetta, 
zero and zero record with fifteen dot eighty eight E R A. All right, so I'm just, just swiping through and hearing some of the baseball stuff here. They uh, so um, that's a great app. I like it. It's very accessible. There's lots of apps that are so. Um, let me now go and show you how to go into that voiceover practice that I mentioned the other way. So I'm going to do that with Siri, and I'm going to hold in the side button on my phone. It may vary on, on a uh, phone with a home button. You want to hold down the home button to use Siri, or I could say, I've got this set up so I can say, hey Siri, open voiceover settings. All right, so here's the home settings, accessibility, back button. All right, so I am in uh, the voiceover settings. And for those of you who can see the screen, you might see that my screen looks a little different than you might expect. I have what's called dark mode turned on because I have some vision. So I like prefer that mode because it's not as glaring on my eyes. So for low vision people, you can change text size and font and colors and all kinds of cool stuff with this thing lot of power in this phone. So um, let me go down and find the voiceover practice this way. So I'm in voiceover settings. Voiceover heading. Voiceover on. Voiceover speaks items on the screen. Tap once to select an item. Double tap to activate the selected item. Swipe three fingers to scroll. To go home. Slide one finger up from the bottom edge until you feel the first vibration, then lift your finger. This is just some help messages they give you to learn a few of the basics or remind you of some of the basic gestures that you want to use on the phone. To use the app switcher, slide up farther from the bottom until you feel a second vibration, then lift your finger. To use control center, slide one finger to use noted voiceover practice button. Selected. Settings, practice voiceover gestures, commands, and typing in this area. Select the done button in the top right corner and double tap to exit. General, button, one of two. So you'll notice what I did there. I didn't want to listen to everything, so I just interrupted it and kept doing the gestures um, and went to the voiceover practice and double tap with one finger to get in here. So now when I do a, a gesture. Practice voiceover gestures commands and one finger double tap activate okay let's say what does two fingers sw swipe down do what does that do two fingers swipe down read all all right reads all it starts reading from where your cursor is down continuously if you're reading a newspaper article it'll just read until the end i'll do a two finger swipe up two finger swipe up read from top and that starts reading from the top of the screen. So a lot of new people who aren't familiar with an app or its layout, I say, do a two finger swipe up and listen to the whole thing. You might hear what you're looking for right in there and just miss it if you're exploring by touch and just touching areas of the screen to try to find uh, something on screen. So um, just another way to get into practice mode here to learn the very basics of voiceover gestures. Um, and again, if you're getting used to a keyboard commands or typing in general, if you have a Bluetooth or Braille display or keyboard hooked up to this thing, you can use commands and type on your keyboard to hear what those keys are so you can learn it and get more comfortable with uh, controlling the phone through um, the keyboards or the touchscreen. So a lot of good options here with this thing. So um, I'm assuming we don't have any questions so far. So We do have a comment okay. from a viewer that says she loves her iPhone SE. Great. Yeah, very good. Uh, glad to know. Most people I've talked to, that phone got some great ratings, the iPhone SE. So um, I've recommended it to two friends already, and they got it, and they love it. The only thing about the SE that I've heard that some people say isn't super great is the battery life. Um, it's not bad. It, it's real good, but the newer phones like the 11 or hopefully the 12 coming out that we still don't know about yet that uh, will be announced will have uh, probably
probably a longer battery life, but they cost a lot more. Those phones are going to cost twice as much as that SE for the value. That SE is a really good option for people to get started at that, at that uh, 399 price. Adding more memory will add additional cost to that, but uh, you never know. The, um, you know the, if your uh, cell phone company may have a plan where you pay a, a small amount each month to pay the phone off in 12 or 24 months or whatever, so a lot of options for um, getting that done so you can get the tools to use the phone. So, um, like I said, there's a couple of gestures. I'll show you a couple more advanced gestures. Um, three finger swipes, you can move the screen around. Um, this is, gets into a little more intermediate and advanced functions, but I can uh, use three finger swipes. Three finger swipe down. Scroll up. Three finger swipe up. Scroll down. Three finger swipe left. Scroll right. So, the way Apple described this is kind of an interesting concept. They say, imagine you have a big piece of paper laying on a table and the phone is like a lens, a magnifying glass lens. When you swipe with those three fingers up, down, left, or right, you're actually pushing the piece of paper and still keeping the lens fixed. So you're looking at the text that is on the page through the lens. So if I have a page and I want to see something lower, I just will swipe down. Three finger swipe down. Scroll up. And so if you have a long list of things like emails, if you have 100 emails in your box and you're trying to find something, you can just use that gesture to scroll through a long list of things and do it pretty rapidly to get to things. There's sometimes more efficient ways to do it, but that's how to scroll a long list of things. Uh, another gesture I'll show you are two gestures. It's very similar. Uh, a lot of times you'll have buttons that are you get used to having something along the bottom of the screen like there's four or five tab buttons on the bottom of the screen to switch to different screens on an app which I'll probably get in and show you some of this um, you can easily get to the bottom of the screen with your focus by touching with four fingers near the bottom of the screen let's see if I can do this at the angle I'm doing this let's see how good I am getting this thing in one try here Read item summary. Oh, I didn't do Two very good. Let me try it Jungle again. Speech. Move to last item. Move to last item. That's a four finger touch. And if I touch the top toward the top of the screen and I do that same four finger touch, move to first item. It says move to first item. So if something you know is close to the top, you can set your focus right there. And talking about focus, if you're used to using a computer, uh, you'll know the focus is about where the system thinks you are. When you're in a document, when you're arrowing around, you're hearing lines of text with the cursor. So the cursor indicates your focus. If you're using a screen reader and a keyboard and you're in a dialog box and you're pressing the tab key, you're moving your focus from item to item, whether that's buttons or list boxes or whatever. So this thing has the same thing. So you're flicking to change your focus and using some of those gestures to move focus around and read what's under there. And I've got an option on there. I don't know if, if you could see this when I was demonstrating earlier, but I have a some vision, like I said before. So I have a little box that goes around and, and puts a box around what's in focus so I can actually see that and use the limited vision that I have to know, okay, this box over here has the focus. I can't, I don't have good enough vision to read the text at all. That's what I use voiceover for, but that focus box does indicate roughly where I am so I can know, okay, I'm in the bottom part of the screen or whatever. Sometimes you get so good at using an app, you just know, okay, that done button is down right up here on the bottom right somewhere up, and you can just put your finger right on it, land right on it, and get it. Enough practice, and you'll get that good at it. So, um, you know, the iPhone is uh, fairly easy to use, lots of options, and definitely encourage uh, use of that Apple this site for people getting started. Uh, talk to a friend. I know um, sometimes with distance, it's a little harder because I know um, when I was working with somebody who was just getting started on the phone, um, I 
was trying to explain the concept of just flicking. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, when you're flicking, you want to start your finger moving in a direction in the air, touch the phone gently while it's still moving, and then lift it like you're kind of flicking off a piece of sand off of a, you know, table or something like that. And even with all that explanation, they weren't getting it. So I actually went to their house and grabbed their hand and worked because I couldn't see them well enough. So somebody with, uh, you know, sighted probably could have seen what they were doing. But I held their hand and touched their hand and felt, okay, you're actually doing the flick, but you're touching the screen with other fingers too at the same time. You know, that you should can't do that. That won't work because the phone is, is confused about what you're doing when you're touching with multiple fingers. There are some gestures with multiple fingers, but uh, most of, you know, the flicking is just with one finger. So um, not, you know, being there in person to actually touch their hand and see what was going on really made the big difference. So, um, Let's go to another app here. Let's let me get out of this. Scrub. I'm going to get out of help two mode. Finger single tap. Toggle speech. I'm going to use the two finger scrub. Escape. Now, one of our specialists, she two says her iPhone Toggle students speech. have become very familiar with the practice model um, and it works very well for them. Um, but she also wants to ask. Um, I know you haven't downloaded it yet in case there's a couple bugs in it, but for the iOS 14, do you have any comments on the accessibility features? Oh, great question. I love it. Thanks for that question. I like like this because um, I do. In fact, I'm going to download and install iOS 14 tonight. I was going to do it last night, but I said I got two presentations today, so I didn't want anything to go wrong or limit what could go wrong in that presentation, so I didn't. But um, I'm going to do it tonight. So iOS 14, there are several two resources I'm going to point you to for learning about all the new great features, accessibility features in 14. AppleVis.com, I already mentioned. There's a series of great podcasts that are, you know, one-offs that tell you about one feature. There's probably 15 of them up there. And you can get those podcasts either on your Amazon device if you want. Just say, play Apple this podcast. Or you can get them on a computer or any smart device. So they're very good. There's also a fellow by the name of Jonathan Mosen, M-O-S-E-N, Jonathan Mosen over in um, uh, uh, not Australia, but the other company, right? Their country, right? Now, New Zealand. Why am I drawing a blank on that? But that's where he is. But he's got a wonderful podcast called Mosen at Large, M O S E N at Large. And he uh, has a great podcast that he has up there. And he did an excellent review of his favorite iOS 14 accessibility features. I'll talk about just a couple of them. There is one that I'm really looking forward to trying out. It's an image descriptor, and it will read text that's in image, like all those memes we get that have text in it that we can't read as blind people that we don't know, that a lot of people use those a lot. So that's something new that's a feature you can turn on in the voiceover settings and control how that works, as you can get uh, basic descriptions of some pictures on Facebook and otherwise, and it'll read text that is on images and pictures. So um, very cool. Um, there's also something on newer phones that's supported called the back tap, which I'm wondering how the heck that works. But you actually can do either a two finger double tap or two finger triple tap on the back of the phone and have those programmed to do certain things. Like, um, you know, there's uh, one person set it up. There's the Google uh, Assistant that you can install as an app on your iPhone to get Google help by voice and that type of thing. And they actually set theirs up so they do a two-finger double tap on the back of their phone and it brings up Google Assistant to ask her questions. So um, really neat features. But if you listen to those podcasts, you'll find all the descriptions of new functionality in 
the iOS 14 operating system. And Apple comes out with these about once a year. You kind of get used to their whole timeline. A lot of these companies like JAWS comes out in October. iOS comes out around the same time. The iPhone's around the same time. So it's sort of like Christmas early. They're getting you ready for Christmas. It's like Santa Claus coming when they bring all this new technology and stuff to us. So um, hope those are real helpful resources, but uh, it's good to keep up with this stuff and see that, you know, Apple is a great company that is offering continued uh, accessibility solutions. So one thing I didn't mention, I also have an Apple Watch on my wrist, and I love this thing. It's really good. I, I like to do a lot of fitness and um, workouts, um, so I use this thing to keep track of my steps, to manage my calendar a little bit. Okay, calendar. No more events today is what it said. I don't know if you can hear that volume's kind of low on this thing. It's just a little device, but... This thing keeps track of my steps and uh, reminds me when I'm not standing or exercising. It keeps track of my distance. Let's see how many steps I've walked today. 3,905 steps. So I, I do about 10,000 steps a day. So I'm uh, not quite there yet. I'm only about, uh, you know, a little less than halfway of my step goal. But I plan on walking home from this demo and then walking my dog later. So I'll get that up quite a bit later on. And, uh, so this, this watch does a whole lot of stuff. In fact, I use it. I set up Apple Pay on this thing. So when I go to Publix and I want to pay for my groceries, I just double press the side button on here and up comes my credit card. And I just hold the thing about an inch or so to, uh, to the left of the pad on the, the, you know, the register up there. And boom, I hear a little beep. I hear another beep. And my payment's done. It bills to my Apple Pay, my credit card, and then I get a receipt and I'm done. It's totally contactless. It is uh, accessible. I don't have to sign anything, so that's very good because I've already authenticated with putting the watch on and doing that. And you can do that with the phone as well. The watch is just extra convenient. So um, they definitely go well together. Um, if I had to do without one or the other, I think I could definitely do without the watch, but couldn't do without the phone. But I do miss the watch, too. Um, in fact, I, I broke my last watch about a year and a half ago, and I bought another one right away just because I got so used to the convenience of using it and for keeping track of all my exercise and step goals and all that stuff that I just didn't want to be without the thing. So I went and got another one. So... I think it's safe to say that I'm probably hooked and I'll always have one until the next great thing comes along. But for right now, uh, I'll keep the stuff. So one final little demonstration here, and hopefully we'll have time if there's any other questions or any comments that come in. We'll uh, react to those as they come in. And definitely appreciate everybody being involved today and uh, really enjoying doing this stuff. I love to uh, talk about what technology can do and how it can uh, really help to uh, level the playing field. So, 2.43 p.m. Right. So let's go to a different app here. Let me go to... App Store. Stocks. Um, Double tap to open. You... Let's see, I'll Sirius go to SiriusXM app. That's Sirius an XM. app that I have on there to access the uh, SiriusXM music service. And, of course, not just music, but talk radio and sports and all kinds of stuff. So SiriusXM. I'm going to double tap and open up SiriusXM. SiriusXM. So this is a good Select one to show these tabs that I was talking about um, on the bottom. So if I wanted to get to the very bottom... I could just touch the uh, bottom of the screen with four fingers. Tap and bar underscore settings. Tap. So I'm close Discover. to the bottom. So that was where the settings are if I wanted to go there. So these tabs along the bottom are different things like selected, discover, discover, tab. and I One can tell five. that's selected. So that's the the tab that has the focus right now. Your favorite channels. There's my Shows. favorite channels. And episodes. Tab. Two of five. So I'll double tap that, and that goes to my Selected. favorite shows. Your favorite so channels, shows, and episodes. Here are some Tab. of my favorite of channels. Five. So if I want to start working down from these, I can touch anywhere on the screen toward the top, or I could 
just uh, use the forefinger gesture to touch at the top of the screen if I want to work in order from left to right and explore. And the phone does wrap, too. If it gets to the end of the line, it'll keep going down until it goes to the bottom. And then you'll get this bump, bump noise that tells you you're at the bottom of the screen and you can't go any further. Channel 809, Denver Bronco, SiriusXM.com, slash Livesports. Channel 945, NHL Tampa Bay Lightning, Sirius XM. Channel 821, New England Patriots, SiriusXM.com. So you can probably tell I like sports a little bit because I got sports stuff up here to tune into different uh, broadcasts. And it's great because as a blind person, I'd rather listen to the football game on Sirius XM over the radio broadcast and watch it on television because I get descriptions of the plays and on TV they assume you can see everything and they're just talking about all kinds of other stuff other than what's going on in the game so sometimes I'm lost I want to know the details of what happened in the play so it's a great way for a blind person to uh, get descriptions of sports games to listen to the audio feed so um, channel 889 NBA Golden State Warriors Channel 106, Trump Nation I. Channel 309, Mo. 12.31.19, Regula, Button. So, lots of stations in here, lots of different things uh, that I can do with this device, and uh, it's great. Like I say, it's been a game changer. I'm always learning more about it. It's uh, a great tool. Uh, didn't I don't know what I'd do without it, and really encourage people to get in and use it. Start basic, find a friend to practice with, check out one of the resources. There's books on the phone. There's lots of, uh, there's a also a resource I'll give called the National Braille Press, okay? I think it's nbp.org, National Braille Press. It's a, uh, they really promote Braille literacy and Braille books and stuff, but there, you can go search that website, download books in word format and uh, electronic format as well so that you don't have to read them in braille uh, and you buy the books on this website and there's even a book that was written by a blind person for blind people who want to take pictures on the phone um, when you use the camera on the phone it'll tell you how many faces that are in the frame and different things about it so uh, this book is written so that it can describe how to set lighting so the lights behind you and all that sort of thing so it describes those concepts to somebody who doesn't even know what light is necessarily to kind of show that so that they can actually take semi-decent pictures and today's with social media and stuff somebody who's totally blind who lives alone might want to take pictures and send it to people so that they can you know show them things um and speaking of pictures you know two wonderful apps that i can't say enough about are be My Eyes and Ira. Be My Eyes is totally free, and it basically has a live video that you sign up on this thing, and you get a volunteer on the other end of this thing who sees what you see through your camera, and you can talk back and forth to ask help on different things, and they can help you, you know, read things, identify if there's an expiration date on something, tell you what certain colors are, help you find something. I've used it for all kinds of things. One day I had a, a, a variety box of coffee K-cups, and I wanted to sort them according to flavors, so somebody helped me. And it just happened to be somebody who used to be a barista, and they knew all about what made up these coffees. So it was kind of awesome to uh, have somebody who described what was in those those things. So that uh, was really lucky to get that person. Ira is a service you can sign up and you can get a five minute call for free and then it costs after that but those are one step up they're actually trained professionals who can help you with navigation and they're very highly trained staff members there who are just great and i encourage people to try out the free ira for the five minutes and to use it if they need to it can really help with independence for somebody who needs help um, and the phone is just the tool to give you that stuff. So um, I know this is kind of just scratching the surface, but hopefully I've given you some tools and some resources here to go out and uh, learn more about what the iOS platform and iPhones can do. And hopefully you'll find wonderful lots of apps to 
really help with a lot of different, uh, you know, things that you're interested in that you really like. And I always encourage people, if you want to learn the phone, start with something you really like because there's nothing that will motivate you more than uh, searching for music or something that you like. If somebody gives you something to do that you're not too into, you're going to be a whole lot less likely to put in the work and learn how to really use the thing if it's something you don't really like. So I encourage uh, you as either teachers or students to start with something you're really motivated to like and that motivation will really help you through and uh, give you the, the skills necessary to use this wonderful tool. So, um, location it, any other final thoughts or questions there? Before we... I think that sums it up over here. All right, wonderful. Well, 2 .51 PM. good luck to everyone. Happy technology and hope everyone uh, got something out of this presentation and uh, see you down the road. Thank you.